and welcome to another episode of so Sunless Skies. I'm Cobalt Thorin. Alright, what do we do here? A day in London. There's a palpable tension in the air today. Ministry officials walk the streets, their expressions stormy. A newspaper at the station proclaims the date. The anniversary of the blockade of New Winchester. Yeah, all right. Day in London. Smog, speckled with light from the clockwork sun, wreathes the throne of hours. Crowds of skyfarers on shore leave throng St. Dominic's Station. Excuse me. And the streets and pubs around. Keen-eyed ministry auditors patrol the thoroughfares while urchins and spies sneak between smoky back alley, uh, back alleys and slums. London thrums with activity, like a great engine in perpetual motion. Hmm. Right before we do anything else, I think we have to probably shed some of our goods here. Oh yeah, we picked up one of these, didn't we? That's not what I wanted to do. It's alright. So... We want to go to start a uh, Spatial Fields Market. And... Get rid of tea. Man, we got a lot of random crap here. Alright, let's get rid of the seeds. Sure. And we'll keep keep some of this other stuff. Toss it in the bank. Yeah. Okay, it's in the bank. Hmm. I probably shouldn't have sold those in season hours. We're running low on them. All right, what do we want to do now? Um. Up to the bazaar, literature for the Avid Horizon, gemstones for the mausoleum. Okay, her renewed Majesty has ordered the construction of a of a memorial chapel for the laborers who, during the promised days, gave their lives to lay the foundation of Albion. Five casks of nar. Navaratine, Nav Navaratine gemstones are acquired for its grand mural to depict the blood, the sweat, and the tears. The mausoleum lies east, east northeast of London. Hmm, I don't know where, where we're going to find Navaratine gemstones, but we should probably grab that. I have no idea where either of these are. Okay. Navaratine gemstones can be reliably purchased at Piranesi and the Forge of Souls. They can also be mined from sky rocks in the Blue Kingdom or found in ruins if you have a saying equipment, which we do. Um, how much ministry of approved literature do we have? Five. Hmm. I don't know if we want to go back down there so soon. Kind of boring, and we have to fight some pretty horrible stuff along the way. I'm more curious about what's around in general. Hmm. Well, finding the mausoleum will help. So let's do that. I also want to try to make sure that we address the problem with the clockwork sun. We don't want it going out. Okay, 
so we have to go to the Clockwork Sun eventually. A cage Catch and a Tale of Terror. We need that. Cage Catches are easy. Grab one from the bank. Yep. Oop. Um. Okay, we have to find Perdurance. Where is that? We don't know. Alright. Let's see if we can address this Clockwork Sun problem here pretty soon. Then I suppose we'll go towards the mausoleum. With an eye out to find Perdurance or whatever other places we can find around here. And where did they say it was? They said it was east, east northeast? Is that what it was? Um. Oh. East northeast, yeah. Okay. Stop it at the orological office. We have a new assignment. Ah, apprentice, third class, you're back. Good, I trust you are ready for your next assignment. We could use that. The clocks must run on time. These careless colonists, we've been getting deliveries before they've even been sent. Chronologically speaking, I mean. Wind your pocket watch and get them back on track. Okay, so we have an assignment in New Winchester, so that's another reason to go back to the reach. Jeez. Keep wanting to send me back. Uh, okay, so here we have uh, the unflappable foreman. The F stands for, well, I'll let you infer. He reads from the order Live specimen of celestial fauna, brackets one, close brackets. We must be in rude health and of intemperate disposition. So, he snaps his ledger shut. Best of luck with that one. No problem. You got it. Yes. We've renewed the sun a little. A ravenous delivery. A pair of laborers maneuver the catch into its new pen, their hands trembling as you recount the tales of ferocity. The foreman shakes his head. God knows what they want this one for. I stopped asking questions. After someone gave me an answer once, he shudders and pays you. Wait. Okay, let's look for a new quest. Can we not get this one? Um. Oh, do we automatically get a, a new quest? So we have to find... Thirsty bomb, bombazine. Let's see what that looks like on the map. Actually, I, oh no, I pressed the wrong button. I should have no wrong one. Oh geez, I'm all over the place. Ah uh, yes, work order seven 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 dash G. <laughs> it says here we're missing two bolts of bombazine, comma. Freshly oiled full stop must be proof against spillages, comma, fraying, and fading. That'd be quite the oil. You may need to improvise. Alright, let's get that. Um, so, bombazine. It sounds like it'd come from here. So, they have nostalgic crockery. Nostalgic crockery. Alright, it doesn't look like we have anything that we can really get this with. Um, now, if we're going east-northeast, 
That would be about here. Let's go around whatever this is. Come out over here. Then we'll go over here. Uh, let's deliver some port reports and see if we get any brightness out of it. We do. Okay. That's nice. That's nice to know. So basically anything that we do for these ministries increases the brightness of the sun. I should have gathered some supplies. While well, I was in London. Actually, we never repaired either, did we? We are ill-fitted for this trip. Well, hopefully it won't be a long one. Let's not take any rests. Let's go back and do the repairs. Get our supplies back up. And then... I guess we'll head over to Brabazon. Or not Brabazon, the... Uh, um, whatever's north of... Or northeast of Brabazon. Oh no, we can. It's uh, we go to the Steam and Sapphire yards. Forty-two. All right. Um, shops. do. Um, I'm actually curious about this, if any of these have changed. Macquarie's Tobacco Shop. I don't think that's changed at all. hasn't changed either. Hmm. Okay, we could do this. Investigate rumors of an underground railway. We've heard less than legal organization operating out of the steam and sapphire yards. They pay for information and may offer work to the bold, the clever, and those willing to displease Her Majesty. We investigate the organization ourselves. We've gathered secrets in your travels. Two of them offer clues to the yard gang's identity. 
But can we go after them? That's the question. I don't want to join them. A lead. With a little sniffing around, two pieces of information became relevant. The name of the Salwark bookkeeper, and the number of the engine shed where he keeps his office. The man is, you are certain, an agent of the group you seek. You decide to pay him a visit. So we have lost two Salwark secrets, but we have heard of the new street line. He occupies a tiny, smoky office, cobbled together from corrugated iron from corrugated iron sheets in the back of one of the engine sheds. It is stacked with nicotine stained account books and boxes full of oily brackets. The bookkeeper looks up as you enter and gestures to a chair. You chat with the bookkeeper. He offers you a cup of tea, savagely stewed and swimming in sugar. Ugh. Or it could depart and take our lead. So this will learn, this will give us use of the new street line. Okay, interesting. So this is where you turn in your stuff if you're being uh, on the bad guy side. So we could trade gratitude for a savage secret. Bookkeeper sees everything from his little office, gla uh, from his little glass office. The more interesting things he records and stores in one of his locked files. Um, or we could trade gratitude for an unlicensed chart. Countless captains pass through the steam and sapphire engine yards. When they do, they talk about their journeys and uh, the things that they saw and the things that they fled from. The engineers listen closely. You would actually give up an unlicensed chart for gratitude? You gotta be kidding me. Trade gra gratitude to win the bookkeeper's trust. Uh, what is this mysterious further work he alluded to? Have you been useful enough that he trusts you? Or we could trade favor for an invitation to Perdurance. The bookkeeper maintains a few crisp invitations to Perdurance. The debutantes he, uh, there are trapped as much as those who work in the work worlds but are much more reluctant to leave. All right. I suppose we could always chat with him. A job on the side. He is deaf, but content to communicate through sign language or um, messages scribbled on a pad of paper. Obliquely, he explains that he does additional work for an organization unaffiliated with the government, which has an urgent need for up-to-date reports on the on the ports of Albion. His patrons will pay for such intelligence to be brought to them, rather than the Ministry. What's more, he implies earning the organization's trust might open the possibility of additional work. Deliver Albion port reports to the Sour Bookkeeper to receive rewards, which we will not do. Still, it's good to know the guy's here. We'll take our leave. Back to it. He nods to you and returns to his ledgers. You cross the ringing engine house with its scattered workbenches, its reek of oil, and return to the yards. Alright, so we sort of know what one thing here is. McQuarrie's tobacco shop is still a mystery. McQuarrie's. Alright. Onwards. Alright, so I guess we're going to take a slightly more direct route. We're going to go up through here and go around here, I think. Just got this thing repaired. All right, 
Alright, we'll pay our respects. Get rid of our terror. These are very useful. Oh, hey, a coffin. Teeming factories, choking smog. The light of the clockwork sun is dulled as if shining through gauze. Well, I guess we're getting closer to the work worlds. Our, our terror up to three again already. Is flying over open areas like. Does that give you more terror or something? We won't loot this one just yet. These are too valuable. We'll save this one in case we need it later. Provide that they don't like despawn or something. Of course. Ooh! I thought that that was above us. Looks like a disaster or some kind of war, maybe. Okay, that means a one to end. I did see some supplies up there. I think we're gonna go ahead and take a peek at whatever they are. That they don't despawn. All right, we'll take a peek at this island. Give them once around. The stink of rust and scrap iron. Tuxedo point. Metallic tuxedo. It's like a clothing factory, tailor shop or something, back in the day. Did I confuse east and west again? I'm so bad at maps, apparently. Oh, what is this? 
Are you still in the base thing here? A windswept habitation. The Enterprise of Albion does not rest. Its skies are littered with abandoned construction. Derelict factories from its earliest foundation. Homes that have yet to be lived in. Workshops for industries that proved irrelevant in the heavens. A state of vacant homes stands here. They have become the temporary habitation of a gang of Skylarks. Uh, those homeless vagabonds who wander the windy paths of the sky. Okay, we could um, take our leave. We have no business here. Best not to linger. Let's swap stories with the Skylarks. The Skylarks have seen more of the heavens than most. Trace Sky story for a vision of heaven. Well, we would probably do that. Um, because visions of heaven are more valuable, I think, than Sky stories. We could trade our food with them. Join an impromptu supper on the bare wooden floors. Trade supplies to reduce terror. And our terror is a little bit high. And gain sky stories. Hmm. It's actually not the worst idea. We trade with them. Somehow they managed to capture a cage. Uh, and cage a beast of the heavens. A thing of flame with iridescent feathers dappled with... And dappled with eyes. They'll part with it for two barrels of fuel. We could offer them positions on our crew. Most Skylarks would rather starve than serve, but a few of them, wearied by their endless wandering, might appreciate the offer of a respectable job. Hmm. Let's do this, because we're going to go by one of those graveyards on the way out anyway. Lies, libation, and, li uh, and liberties. They pass around flasks of something bitter and fiery while revealing, while regaling you with stories. They speak of the windy Ormswold and the intransigent rebellious inhabitants. Whoa. Okay. The long-necked beings that wait on the frosty sh uh, sh stones of Skyhenge. And a plain, and a plain wooden post that stands at the avid horizon, end with messages for smiling, heartless gentlemen. Yeah, so I goofed on this. Um, obviously, north, east, southwest. I always get confused because people say east, and then because you sort of read stuff like, at least you know English, you read left to right. I. I automatically always think that East is on the left. And obviously that's completely bonkers, so. We'll just finish up this exploration here. Get where exactly we started. Did we come up from here? Well, we are definitely here, so let's head back now. Um, well, let's try to make the best of this journey. Get as much scouting in as possible. Clear the map. Whoa, what are you? I don't know if I want to know. Actually, we, we want to hit this, don't we? Whoa. Oh, ow, ow.
Okay. The deranged dreadnought is defeated. A lot of D's there. Nice. The deranged dreadnought's rabid uh, aggression is stilled now. Your lights reveal the glassy growths encasing sections of its ravaged hull. Where the battle has shattered them, they spill across the sky in a plume of shards and dust. <laughs> Excuse me. It's all the smoke from wrecking them. Alright. Loot the hold. The encroachment of glass extends into the engine, creeping along the corridors and into cabins. But perhaps the contents of the hold have, been, have escaped uh, vitrification to find random treasures. Or could try to recover the glass. The airy contagion of glass that afflicts the dreadnought uh, may yield valuable materials if you can find some large enough, large enough slab. You may gain panes of stained glass. Now, it sounds like this glass is almost like a, like a fungus or something that grows through the ship. So we probably don't want to take it onto our ship. Let's loot the hold. Munitions. Nice. Yep, we've read this before. Well, now we're in kind of bad shape in terms of damage. So... And I don't want to return to London quite so soon, but we might have to. I'm going to have to get better at fighting those things, because I have a feeling that we're going to see a lot more of them. sure that we've got more all of our scouting done. Alright. We're not gonna do the mysterious gleaming. I was hoping I'd take it down further. Could be worse. background. That's so annoying. Because it looks like it's... It's dark like foreground.
What is this? Your aunt is here. Dear God. Uh, yeah, well, I guess so. Somehow, she found... Somehow, she has found her way to the high wilderness. She's trying to get your attention with a frantic waving of her horrible hat. Now you listen to me. Listen. I've quite exhausted my possibilities here. I'm serviceable quartermaster. I have friends everywhere. And my scones are to die for. I really don't want to hire this person. How's that for a curriculum vitae? Now let me aboard. Is she even your real aunt? Either way, you'll have to deal with her. You can employ your aunt as a quartermaster. Uh, requires a sign-on fee. Filial piety demands as much. Uh, and she does make a damn fine scone. You get a quartermaster who will increase your iron by two and your mirrors by... Or increase your iron by six and your mirrors by two. Not now, auntie. Locomotives are no place for aunts. You can always recruit her later. Though you will risk her wrath. Can I just unlock her and not use her? Who's my quartermaster right now? Oh, this guy. smiles with sincere delight. Here, take my bag. Her bag is very heavy. And my hat. Her hat is also very heavy. <laughs> your crew are alarmed as she boards your engine. Their alarm only increases as she begins to pass comment. After a thorough survey of your locomotive, she grimaces with a smile. There's work to be done. She has extracted gossip from you before she has even boarded. This woman is skilled. Learning about an inconvenient aunt... Your aunt is aboard your locomotive. You've recruited an inconvenient aunt and lost one savage secret. Um. Yeah, we have to repair. How much is that going to cost? 78. Oof. If we take, keep taking battles like that, we're going to go bankrupt. Try going east. This time, going real east. <laughs> okay, so east, northeast. Hold on. Northeast would be there. East would be there. So we're talking about like right here. Okay.
a resurrectionist deceased. The resurrectionist haunt, haunt memorium, plundering its graves for corpse goods and cadavers. They sell the valuables to pawn shops and and the bodies to disgraced scholars, deranged artists, and ghoulish collectors or grizzly collectors. Search the locomotive for valuables. What have they stolen from the sleeping dead? Anything valuable? Uh, will have to be carefully concealed. You'll need to think. Oh, you'll need to think like a grave robber. Chances are too low. I'm not gonna go. Unfortunately, I cannot read that. Well, that seems like a promising sight. If we're looking for the mausoleum, which we are. burned blue. Lamps on the interior of your engine dim and flare again, but now they burn a stark electric blue, playing hard etched shadows against the walls. What happened to the fires, Captain? Uh, a crewman asks. The lamp fires in the fires dance as the wind whipped them. Uh, so we can invent a comforting lie. The celestial vapors. It's a, all... It's a good all-purpose rationale. You can snuff out the lanterns and fly in the dark. The lamps are watching. The fires are their blue, blue eyes. Well, that sounds terrifying. Oh, what? What is this? Flying blind. You order your locomotive plunge into darkness. Every lamp is quenched and emptied of oil. The crew manage as best they can by starlight, but accidents inevitably happen. Tensions rise. After a day, you light an experimental lamp. It burns yellow. You relight the others. We've gained five terror. My terror is getting terribly high. We've lost a crew. Why is my terror freaking out like this? Is it the proximity of that thing? I guess it was. Never even read what that thing was. seem to be out of the grave area again, which is a bad thing because that's exactly where we were trying to go. Really use a dock someplace and take down her terror quite a bit. Hmm. 
exactly the opposite of what I wanted to see. Whoa. What the hell is this? Oh my god. Polo's heaven. Whoa, look at that. That's just nuts. Can't take a chance. Great. Now we have to be getting close to this thing, right? <laughs> go down further than that. We'll take what we can. The nave. The soaring uh, sepulchral heart of the most serene mausoleum. Constructed over the cooling embers of Albion's murdered son. Interesting. So the, the sun... I thought that all that shattered area near the clockwork sun was the murdered sun, but I guess not. The mausoleum was built to house London's most glorious dead. Kensington Station. Kensington Station is tucked into the, a side chapel. An elderly footman is lighting candles while waiting to guide visitors into the mausoleum proper. He escorted inside. The footman watches you alight from your engine, coughs meaningfully. Among the dead, did we just get more terror again? Lighting a fresh taper, he carries in a silver holder. The footman leads you through a narrow arch and down a winding spiral stair. You can hear the weeping close by, but the echoes make it hard to discern the source. Soon after, you hear a sharp burst of laughter and music. Occasionally, you can make out the rumble of what the footman confirms to be London, the Acropolis Railroad, far below. At the very bottom is an oak paneled door. The footman unlocks the door, bows, departs. The footman disappears into the gloom, leaving you alone facing a desk shaped like a baptismal font. A cheery registrar sits in the middle, waiting to greet you. You can introduce yourself. There are protocols that must be followed in the mausoleum. An introduction and a warning. Which as you fill out a form indicating your profession, age, usage of hours, and to confirm your legal status as alive. The Prince's Consort Tomb is exceedingly popular. Uh, the Prince Consort's Tomb is exceedingly popular. To prevent congestion, donations are required. The greater the donation, the longer you will be allowed to gaze upon the sepulchre. If one is fortunate enough to garner the attention of the deathless, one must be respected and only speak when spoken to. 
does not do for the living to linger long among the dead. She flies, she follows away your, your form uh, into an exceedingly large black cabinet. Self laughter comes from a side altar, the ruffle of silk, a sudden giggle, the, cl the clatter of a falling reliquary. <laughs> All right, let's look at these choices. Um, visitors to the most serene mausoleum are ushered into the nave. A vast soaring vault above the heart of the mausoleum. Here, guests to the mausoleum may visit the tomb of the prince consort, arrange for the burial of their dead in the catacombs, or merely enjoy the solemn environs of the empress's monument to her departed love. We could inter our aunt. It is time. She has requested shore leave at the mausoleum and means to join the deathless. Your aunt will leave your engine. You may pick her up again at any time. Uh, it might be good to get rid of her. I don't know. We're not going to use her, probably. I should probably talk to her, honestly. Uh, we could write a port report. The most serene mausoleum is, if not part of her renewed majesty's domain, and at least its pulmonary valve. We could visit the memorial to the prince consort, the most dearly beloved corpse in all Albion. We could approach the deathless, her renewed majesty's most highly favored courtiers uh, prefer the upper climbs of the nave away from the excitable members of the public. You could inter a member of the crew. Mausoleum accepts remains or mementos of the dead in its vaults. For those who can afford it, of course, for everyone else, there's always the sky. Or can contemplate the dead sun. The corpse of Albion's old sun is visible from the great rose colored window. So is that blasted apart planet thing down there the old sun? Or it could range, arrange a meeting with a retired devil. A single devil resides, resides in the mausoleum. He spends his time corresponding with various academics. An introduction can be arranged. But one thing your acquaintances agree on. He's no, he is in no way retired. Well, it doesn't seem like we have the uh, ability to do that. Need more academy. Let's write the port report first. Get it out of the way. The most serene mausoleum endures. The catacombs grow as the necropolis line brings more bodies for burial. Traders bring fresh hours into the mausoleum. Endowments from the empress for the deathless interred in the vaults. Plans are in motion to add a new chapel to the nave while the, desol while the deathless petition for, n for a new separate station for the exclusive use of their servants. Death has never been in so much motion. You can hand your report reports to the genial auditor or the... yeah. I have a feeling that visiting the memorial and maybe interring will decrease our terror. So let's do that. The most serene mausoleum was built to commemorate her renewed majesty's dead love. His tomb is at the heart of the mausoleum. The vaults, chapels, mourners, and courtiers, all arteries and cavalries to his memory. To visit the tomb, one must speak to the cheery registrar. We could return to the nave. You've lingered long enough in the shadow of death. You join the reverent crowds at the Prince Consort's tomb. A few sovereigns will buy. Oh, it'll reduce it a little, huh? A few sovereigns will buy you a few minutes at the sepulchre. We could deliver an uncanny specimen via access to the upper gallery. The cheery registrar accept uh, diverse meats in lieu of monetary donations. It's customary to leave offerings at the tomb, 
which are cleared away the next day. This will reduce a moderate amount of terror. How many do we have? Ten. Oh, we need to give three? Wow, that's expensive. Or you could donate souls for a private viewing of the tomb. A donation of suitably august souls will get you a private viewing. This so will reduce a significant amount of terror. Oh, I wonder how many times we can do this. So it takes it down by one. That's so ridiculous. The cherry registrar marks your name on the account book before summoning a footman to guide you to the tomb. The tomb is sunk into a round chapel behind a, a choir. The effigy of the prince consort rests on top. His long hands are folded in prayer. Four sculpted seraphim support him, although as though to lift him up in flight. Crowds of visitors in mourning jostle in mourning jostle for better position. A lady in an inconceivable hat shoves her way to the front. You are afforded a brief glimpse at the prince's haunted marble face before you're ushered away. Terrors fallen by one. I hope we can still do this other one. Yes. The cherry registrar gives you a vibrant smile. Your specimens are placed in a safe under the registrar's desk, which is swiftly locked. The smile never falters. You're led to the chapel, where the prince consort is housed. Crowds throng around the tomb, leaning over the sturdy railings for a better look. You are directed to a balcony. You are directed to a balcony up a small spiral stair. From your elevated position above the crowds, you can make out the serene features. Yeah. Okay. I guess we haven't read this. Uh, the serene... Wait. Uh, from your early position above the crowds, you make it the serene features of the prince's effigy, gazing up from his tomb as though at the stars. You can also make out a door just behind the tomb, which is locked and barred. Uh... Is there some way we can do this faster? Oh my god, you're gonna make me click this many times. Alright, that's probably good enough. We will return to the nave. Uh, let's see what happens if we inter a crew. Oh, it takes it down. All right. The cheery registrar, uh, that's probably what I should have done instead of some of the other stuff. I wish you told me how much terror it took off. The cheery registrar adopts an expression of practice solemnity and calls for a footman. The footman asks a number of questions about the crew member, name, occupation, beer or niche, or niche, candles and how often, flowers and what variety, Eventually, he is satisfied and leads you and those of your crew closest to the deceased into the catacombs of the mausoleum. You are guided to a vast tomb where candles have been lit and the scent of lilies is strong. The crew member is interred at, in a small drawer in one wall of many. Here, your crew members, or some part of them at least, will remain at last at rest. Well, that's what I probably should have done. Um, Alright, so we're not going to enter the aunt until we talk to her. We already did the Prince Consort one. We haven't done the Deathless. We did enter a member of the crew. Which is probably what we should have done from the beginning. I also want to contemplate the dead sun. The corpse of Albion's old sun is visible from the great rose-colored window. Oh, we just got new terror. Jeez, come on. The conquest of heaven. Smoke still rises from the sun's smoldering core. The wound that slew it is clearly visible. 
A great rent torn in one side. Star stuff, long since cooled to the color of coal, spills into the sky. When Her Majesty entered Albion, she slew the sun with an experimental weapon, an unclear bomb. And she claimed the sun's throne and dominion. Leaving the remains here is a clear message. Not even the suns are above the Empire's reach. Alright, let's talk to the Deathless. The most serene mausoleum houses more than just the Prince Consort. Under its soaring spires, the Empress keeps her most favored courtiers. These lucky few are provided with every luxury they might wish, and a generous stipend of ours. The only condition of this bounty is that they are dead, legally only. They cannot possess property, nor hold political office as a result. They are the deathless. Occasionally they will, they will dine to appear to visitors. We can speak with the macabre consular. She is a former lady of the, lady of the bedchamber and governess to at least some of her renewed majesty's children. Mortality is a preoccupation of hers. Yeah. Okay, we got a couple other things we can't do here. What is this? You could entertain a request from the from the macabre um, counselor. The cheery registrar gives you a note and a worried smile. The macabre counselor has requested your attendance, an honor, uh, an honor rarely granted to the legally living. You could do an invitation. The cherry registrar hands you a gold leaf envelope. Penned in black. It seems to have attracted the attentions of one of the deathless. This will allow you to take on unique bargains for the deathless. Though you will lose favor. The bargain is randomized. You may be able to change which is available by replaying the invitation. Hmm. You can speak with the Dimsel Chamberlain. The Chamberlain provides, uh, pre presides over the affairs of the mausoleum. He has seniority in the sepulchre and rarely meets with visitors. Okay. What are we missing here? Okay, we need favors. Or we can make a donation to the upkeep of the mausoleum. The Deathless do not lack for time. They do, however, lack for diversion. Fresh reading material is valued high here, and a glimpse of the world left behind. This will allow you to speak to the currently available member of the Deathless immediately. Alright, let's try this. Man, I'm getting terror like crazy. Half in love with easeful death, the counselor advances through the nave like an old spider uh, trespassing on a rival's web. Her eyes dart and her fingers curl and twitch. She notices your gaze and approaches lazily. A footman moves to intercept, but she holds up a hand. He pales and retreats. She begins by quoting Keats at you. Ode to a nightingale. She uh, surmises you've encountered death in the skies, known its easeful touch on your cheek. She proceeds thusly for some minutes, lingering on each crewman fallen, each cold burial in the dark. And then she smiles suddenly and bids you a pleasant day. Send a burning incense wafts by. The Duchess Incarnate is abroad, is abroad today. Hmm. You've encountered one of the Emperor's deathless courtiers. You've gained favor. How much? One? Oh, just one. Uh, let's talk to the macabre counselor. Did I already do this? Okay. 
Okay. Into the dock. Several footmen are on hand to escort you from the nave and through the oak panel doors that lead down to the catacombs of silence where the macabre counselor resides. Black candles burn in silver candelabras. Fading tapestries molder on the walls. Glass cabinets, bones of saints and sinners are displayed with gloomy relish. The, ma the macabre counselor is a model is in a maudlin mood, regaling you with stories of her youth and musing wistfully at past past regrets. I have only one worth mentioning. My daughter. The Empress saw fit to take her from me as a punishment, I suppose. She could be terribly pretty, could Vicky. She examines you speculatively. I wish to have my daughter return to me. Fulfill this mission, and I shall bequeath you with a great reward. You accept her commission. You are partial to a good reward. <laughs> it occasionally gets you into trouble, or you can take your leave. The counselor waves a claw-like hand and turns her attention to an elaborate embroidery of skulls. Let's accept the commission. We always like missions. A courtly hostage. She is a hostage at Perdurance, kept to ensure my discretion. Is this exactly what I should not have been doing? There you go. She hands you several charcoal sketches of her daughter, a pretty, presumptuous heiress with dark eyes and a curly lock brown hair. I have an agent in place to assist to conceal my daughter's escape. You will need invitations to access the Half-Life mask to effect a rescue. Ugh, excuse me. Ugh. I only have three to hand. It's likely you will need to secure more. Your mind returns to her use of the word hostage, an odd choice. Her durance is said to be a place of endless del delights where children of society's elite dally luxury and uh, elite dally in luxury. Surely it shouldn't be too much trouble to escape. Uh, to rescue one spoiled presumptuous heiress from the lap of opulence, even if it was, even if it was, even if it were the Empress's lap. Does this tell us where Perdurance is? Nope. All right, we can speak with the dismal Chamberlain. The Chamberlain presides over the affairs of the mausoleum. His seniority over the, over the sepulcher and rarely meets with visitors. The dismal Chamberlain. Your attempts to meet the Chamberlain are met with relentless obfuscation. The secretary reschedules the meeting eight times, eventually arranging for it six days ago. Uh, you even try waiting all day outside the Chamberlain's office, but he does not appear. Ugh, jeez, I'm yawning like crazy. Oh. His duties include regulation of the time of the mausoleum, where the deathless wallow in generous pensions of ours. However, the clocks are not keeping the same time. Has something happened? Finally, you manage to corner the engraved mourner and press him for answers. The chamber, the Chamberlain is no longer in residence, he replies curtly. We don't dwell on the matter. We suggest you follow it. The Dismal Chamberlain is missing. Perhaps this merits further investigation. We have lost favor. We just had favor.
Hmm. That might be all we can do. So there's the Mausoleum Bazaar. Locomotive captains gathered at the bazaar. Yeah, that's the same message as before. I don't know where we're going to find these gemstones. An unfortunate of glass. A bashful showman is, un is selling tall panes of colored glass. It's to dismantle a maze of mirrors, he explains. Following a number of, well, disappearances is a very strong word, isn't it? Anyway, as long as you keep them away from silver, you should be entirely safe. Well, that's an interesting. It's fine. I'm sure you can sell them for a lot more. Then we have memorabilia. This is the most cheerless gift shop in all of it, Albion. They do sell memorative Prince Consort windows at a reasonable price, though. Alright, I think that there's not really anything else we can really do here at this point. We could chart a better route to get here, for sure, and we definitely went the long way. I wonder if there's a way down here. But even so, this is a pretty short route. Anyway, I think that that's going to wrap up this episode. It is getting on a little bit. So thank you very much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you have, please like, maybe comment, maybe subscribe. I'll catch you in the next episode. Bye-bye.